So we've seen how to multiply a matrix times a vector. And of course, a vector is just uh, a matrix with one column. Uh, it's a column vector. So um, now we see how to multiply two matrices together in more general. And if we have an M by N matrix, it's got M rows and N columns and an n rows by p columns matrix b we notice the number of columns of a is the same as the number of rows of b and that's deliberate the answer is an m by p matrix and the point is that every row in a gets together with every column in b and so every row in a and every column in b we get an entry an element in c so how do we do this? Well, it's really just the same as the dot product. If we write B as columns, B1 up to BP are the columns of B as, as column vectors. And the way we do A times B to get C is we just do A times each of those column vectors in turn. Um, so in, in fact, within those, we get each row of A and hit it against the column B. So here's an example. We've got a matrix A and a matrix B. Notice that there are three columns here and three rows here. So they are compatible. The answer will be two by two because we take every row of A and every column of B to get um, an answer in the product. So let's see how that works out. Um, so the first entry, uh, we get the first row and the first column. So we get 2 times 6 plus 1 times 7 plus 3 times 2. And then for the next entry, we get the first row and the second column. And we're going to write that answer in the, in the first row and second column. 2 times 1 plus 1 times 3 plus 3 times 1. Then we go on to the second column, so, so second row. So we take the second row of A and the first column of B. So it's... Um, 2 times 6, 4 times 7, and 4 times 2. And then finally, to get the thing that's in the second row and second column, we get the second row of A and dot product with the second column of B, like that. 2 times 1, 4 times 3, 4 times 1. And that's how we do a matrix product. Some special properties. The identity matrix, which was just ones on the diagonal, that doesn't do anything when you multiply it. In, in fact, um, you can multiply on either side with the identity matrix of the correct size to do that. And it gives you back the same matrix A. The zero matrix, or more specifically, any zero matrix that's compatible, um, if you multiply it by A, uh, uh, gives you a, another zero matrix. The shape of the zero matrix is determined by the rule that I said. It works in many ways like arithmetic, um, so that A times B plus C is AB plus AC, and also the other way round. That's called the distributive law. And also, it doesn't matter which one we do first, A times B times C, or A times B times C, although um, one of them might be quicker to work out. The transpose has an interesting property. Of course, the transpose reverses the rows and columns. And so to get the transpose of the product, we just swap everything round and we do B transpose times A. So that what, what, uh, what was uh, columns of B now becomes rows of B transpose. And so th these only hold if, of course, you can do this multiplication. So the, uh, the dimensions have to be compatible. A times B doesn't mean that A or B equals zero. So some things are different from arithmetic. For example, if you get a matrix with lots of zeros in like this and another one with zeros in a different place, it's possible to multiply them together to get zero, even though neither A nor B were zero. This sort of means that you, you can't necessarily divide by matrices. You also can't cancel, which is part of the same thing. In other words, A times C does not necessarily equals A times D. Uh, and, you know, similarly, it arises when um, 
something's kind of lost in um, in multiplying by a. So it's not really seeing the whole of C or D. Also, in general, AB and BA are different. Of course, in some cases they might be the same, but uh, of course getting a row of one and a column times another, um, you know, it won't generally work out if you do it the other way around. That's talk called not commutative. So matrix multiplication is not commutative. And I mentioned that, um, that it can represent rotations and uh, a brief experiment with uh, moving an object around will convince you that rotations in three dimensions at least are not commutative. It matters what order you do them in. So here's another example. Here are two matrices. Well, they're not compatible uh, because there's three columns here and two rows. But A, B transpose is compatible and uh, we, can, we can just work it out by multiplying the rows of this by the columns of B transpose, which of course are the rows of B. Uh, to get the thing in the first row, second column, we take the first row, the first matrix and the second column of the second matrix and so on.